Hello, um, I am Mr. Parks, I'm one of the biology teachers at Ashton Sixth, uh, and I'm here today uh, with a short outline um, of what you might expect uh, if you come and study uh, A-level biology uh, here at Ashton Sixth. Um, so today we are say, introducing what you might be studying, some of the ideas that we might encounter, and some of the differences between uh, GCSE and A-level. So um, one thing uh, you can see from the list of keywords down there, there are going to be some that are familiar, there are going to be some that are unfamiliar, um, there are going to be some that are uh, using root words you can kind of uh, break down the meaning of already. Um, but one thing to know is uh, A-level biology, there is a lot of terminology, much as there is a, a GCSE biology. But the thing is, um, when you first started studying a, a biology at GCSE, a lot of that stuff probably uh, seemed quite intimidating as well. Um, and we will help you through it and absolutely the same way that uh, as you went from year eight into year nine and started learning all those terms, uh, you will understand the meaning of all these by the end as well. Um, so um, why might you think about studying able biology? Well, um, for students who have enjoyed science in general and biology in particular at GCSE uh, and are looking to go further, um, there are obviously lots of uh, different careers that you can go into with A-level biology um, and with the sciences as well. Um, so uh, let's get started in terms of uh, what you might expect from a typical lesson. Um, so first thing I like to do is kind of uh, have a think about uh, this image here. So uh, these images, what do they mean? What is the story we are thinking about? Okay, and this is, you know, typically where I might start uh, in an A-level lesson, quite a broad, open question that enables you to uh, to bring in quite a lot of the knowledge that you've got already. Okay, so um, here we are looking at the idea of uh, spontaneous generation. Um, so uh, prior uh, to as recently as sort of 18th century, uh, we might have thought that um, when uh, things decomposed, uh, that flies, bacteria, even mice um, appeared spontaneously. Um, so uh, the uh, only way that we uh, know this is not the case is through a lot of uh, careful experimentation. So uh, Louis Pasteur's uh, experiments here with a swan neck flask, so he had a nutrient broth, uh, was boiled to sterilize it, and uh, when it had uh, this intact uh, swan neck flask that uh, no uh, Micro, uh, microbes in the air could get in, we found it remained uh, sterile, whereas when it was broken, uh, we found uh, that there, there was mold formed, there was uh, decay and decomposition going on, uh, which proves that um, this isn't an inherent property of kind of organic matter. It's not uh, that these bacteria spontaneously spring into being, it's that they are um, infecting this from elsewhere. Um, so this is a really important step in understanding biology and it forms um, one of the fundamental principles uh, of biology, which is cell theory. Um, so this uh, states that all living tissues are composed of cells, that cells are the basic repeating unit of all life, uh, and that cells only develop from pre-existing cells. Um, so they don't spontaneously spring into being. Um, so um, from here, we might uh, go on to think about um, some of the scientists and some of the experiments that uh, led to the development of this theory. And I think um, one of the great things about animal biology is it really gives you the chance to kind of look at the work that led to these ideas. I think it, uh, at GCSE, in some cases, you kind of just have to accept that this is what it is and this is our best theory for something. But actually, um, some of the nuances that do begin to come at uh, GCSE, but you really get to explore at A-level, is that science isn't you know, some dusty old idea handed down from person to person. It's a living, uh, living breathing thing um, that is, uh, has been developed over generations as a result of the work of hundreds of thousands of scientists and continues to develop today. Um, so, um, typically, uh, we would also uh, look at uh, microscopes. Uh, we would use microscopes in the first uh, topic that we would uh, look at uh, in the uh, kind of uh, fundamentals of uh, of biological sciences. Um, so, uh, we like microscopy, optical microscopes, exactly as you would encounter them at GCSE. Um, the difference is being. There's a lot more opportunity to use them at A-level. Uh, the microscopes that we do have um, are a much better quality. Uh, and also we've got different types of microscopes. So we've got binocular and compound microscopes that you might be able to look at as well. Um, so 
Um, you can see that uh, there is a lot of familiarity, so we're not going to throw you into the deep end just to begin with. Um, we also look at uh, some other stuff you might have studied previously, electron microscopy, uh, but also some uh, some other uh, more advanced technique, uh, techniques like laser confocal microscopy. Um, but the basics of kind of the idea that we are observing microscopic cells and using a microscope to magnify them and observe them, they remain the same. Uh, so uh, what I'd like to do uh, is have a look at a slide that I've previously prepared. Um, so that just uh, means I need to uh, switch screens very briefly and switch my camera uh, to have a look at the optical uh, microscope. So we've got a USB microscope, um, so you can uh, see, hopefully, uh, that we've got uh, under here, uh, this is uh, an onion uh, membrane, okay, uh, I'm just having to fiddle about here because what is, uh, I can see through the eyepiece is slightly different from what appears on screen. Um, so you can see some of the major structures here, okay, so you can see uh, we've got uh, nuclei that have been stained by the iodine, uh, you can also see that we've got uh, some cell walls. Uh, at this level of magnification, it's quite difficult to kind of get everything in the uh, same field uh, because you start to see the 3D structure. Um, so uh, here we've got a uh, nucleus in the middle, we've got a uh, cell wall in the middle uh, is a cell membrane. You can just about see some sort of plasmodesmata, which are these structures uh, in between the cell walls. Um, so like you would at GCSE, uh, one of the important skills um, that comes up time and time again in key stage five A-level biology um, is accurate uh, cell diagrams. Um, so unlike uh, GCSE where, you know, you might have kind of vaguely drawn a shape and then stuck some labels on, um, there are uh, very specific rules to follow uh, A-level. Um, but for those of you uh, who kind of tend uh, towards working neatly and meticulously, uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So you can uh, see here the drawing we would expect um, would be, you know, a, uh, a few of the cells. Um, we are looking for a few clearly defined structures uh, with stated magnification, uh, with a title, uh, using a sharp pencil. Uh, our labels are straight lines and they are perpendicular with the top of the page, uh, no shading. Uh, so it's not an artistic impression, it is a clear uh, description of what we are looking at. Okay, so uh, you can see from the uh, image under the microscope how we get uh, a clear drawing like we've got um, on the screen here. Um, so I'm just going to um, uh, turn my camera back. So, uh, there we go. Okay, um, so from that, what I'd like you to do, um, have a look at this typical example uh, of an exam question. Um, so the bit of set up at the top, so the student was observing onion epithelial cells, just like we've done on the microscope here. Um, so the photographs, so we've got the image that they photographed on the left and the drawing that made, they made on the right. So um, based on those rules that you've just seen, uh, I'd like to have a go. Uh, you can pause the video if you like, have a think. So there is one incorrect label, um, so you get one mark uh, for an incorrect label and one mark for an explanation as to why that label is incorrect. Okay, um, so have a think, have a go, and then we'll go on through an answer. All right, so uh, one of the options, um, so they have labeled uh, this structure here as a large permanent vacuole. Um, that is, as you can see from the picture, that's an air bubble. Um, so, uh, a common mistake to make, particularly if you don't put your cover slip on correctly, but definitely a mistake. So, the explanation is that this is an air bubble. So, uh, if you got that, then congratulations, you got two marks uh, on your first A level biology paper. Um, the other option is uh, this at the bottom, it's been labeled as a ribosome. Uh, it is, in fact, obviously a nucleus. Um, so, uh, that is far too large uh, to be a ribosome. Ribosomes are not going to be visible uh, under a light microscope. Um, so, um, same question, well, same uh, drawings, a couple more questions on this. So, again, thinking back to the rules that we had a look at, um, 
other than the incorrect labels, what are three improvements the students could make to improve the biological drawing, which was deemed by the teacher to be of poor quality? So again, have a think. Uh, we'll go through some answers. Pause the video if you need a bit of thinking time. So most obvious thing to me, uh, the magnification. Okay, uh, It should always uh, be stated what your magnification is. So uh, you need to take into account the eyepiece magnification as well as the objective lens magnification. So um, I was looking at uh, the onion uh, cell under uh, with a times 40 objective lens and a times 10 uh, eyepiece lens. So therefore my total magnification was 400 times. It's really important to know how much it's been magnified. Otherwise you've got no context as to what you're looking at. Speaking of which, our next improvement, title. So it should say onion epithelial cell at times 400. Okay, um, next one. Um, so, uh, one of the options you could say uh, lines perpendicular uh, to page and not crossed is an improvement that you need to make. So, you shouldn't be crossing over labels and they shouldn't be diagonal, they should be perpendicular. Uh, the other thing, tempting though it is, uh, we shouldn't see any shading either. So, you should be outlining those structures but not filling them in. Um, so, you can see there's a really nice bridge between um, the skills, the knowledge that you've got uh, at GCSE and what you would need to be. Uh, uh, working towards uh, a level so speaking of which and i think um this works as both uh, a bit of content that we will cover but also a bit of a metaphor for um the development uh, of knowledge required at, uh, at a level so uh, there's your typical uh, animal cell um, there are some structures in here we'll talk about in a second uh, around the outside is your membrane and you can see the membrane has been represented as a single line and at gcse that's absolutely fine but as you've already seen, uh, under a light microscope, um, you start to get a bit more impression of those structures. So uh, this actually is an electron micrograph uh, rather than a light uh, micrograph. Uh, but you can see actually immediately uh, the uh, development in detail here. So it's not a single line, it's a double layer. So if we zoom in on that even further, uh, you can see uh, that there is a clear double membrane uh, and there's some kind of space in between. It's not empty space, there's some structures going on. Um, later we'll find out uh, that that is the a phospholipid bilayer uh, with the uh, phosphate heads and the lipid tails uh, that is sandwiched together, uh, which is fundamental uh, to how uh, cells and organelles within cells exchange substances with their environments. And, uh, and when we, you know, when we talk about that cell membranes control what goes in and out, um, a lot of it goes down to this structure um, that large and polar molecules are unable to pass through, whereas uh, small non-polar molecules can pass readily through. Um, and you know, we will. There is a whole topic uh, on plasma membranes, their structure, factors that affect their structure. Um, and I think it's a really nice way to think that uh, if you are somebody uh, who is just really interested in going to a lot more depth uh, than GCSE biology provides, uh, this is just a small snapshot. Um, so it's not just depth, it's not just um, stuff you have done before in more detail. There are also a whole range of other topics that you have never encountered before that we get to study, both in theory and in practical. Um, and one advantage of Ashton Sixth is we have uh, access to all the, lo uh, the labs and we've got a dedicated sixth form uh, lab uh, up on seafloor. Um, also, you know, compared to other organisations, uh, other uh, sixth form centres in Bristol, uh, we are 100% in class. You will get a dedicated uh, pair of teachers at A-level biology and we will as much as possible, uh, explore as much practical as we can. So we study the OCR uh, Biology A course, uh, which means there aren't named required practicals, but there are examined practical skills uh, that we will develop throughout. Um, and we are, you know, a, a science and biology department uh, here at uh, Ashton Sixth. Uh, really believe uh, that hands-on practical science is the best way to understand this stuff. Okay, um, so uh, we don't have an electron microscope, but absolutely we've got a colorimeter that we would use to investigate uh, the effect of uh, temperature and uh, ethanol concentration uh, on the uh, structure and stability of uh, plasma membranes. You know, we've got our good quality uh, A-level biology microscopes. 
Uh, there are plenty of opportunities for dissections, for field work, uh, for all the hands-on science that uh, particularly uh, those of you struck by the pandemic over the, the last couple of years have be really been missing out on. Um, so one thing I'd sort of like to leave you with, because uh, I think it's quite a, a striking image, uh, and again, uh, goes to that idea uh, that all that stuff, uh, the cover at GCSE it is still there, uh, but a real opportunity to really get to grips with what is going on uh, inside uh, your body, inside the cells of every living thing. So um, have a look, have a think, see if you can identify uh, any familiar structures from this, uh, and then pause the video and we'll have uh, a brief talk through. All right, so uh, strikingly, uh, you should, I'm sure, <laughs> identify this large structure in the middle as a nucleus. Uh, we've got some mitochondria over here. Uh, we've still uh, got that cell membrane uh, or plasma membrane uh, to be more precise around the outside. Um, but have a look. All this stuff uh, that is inside a typical eukaryote cell that you get to investigate, uh, that you get to explain, that you get to explore uh, A-level biology. So uh, if you are somebody who has a passion for science uh, and wants to go further, uh, and if you are somebody uh, who has a good memory for terminology, uh, but don't worry, we'll help you with that, uh, then A-level biology might be with you, uh, might be for you. Um, so, you know, if you are looking to go down the route of medicine or biomedical science or veterinary science uh, or nursing or dentistry or midwifery or uh, any kind of uh, anything in the uh, kind of uh, genetics uh, or pharmacy field, uh, there are myriad applications of a biology A-level um, and it can really help um, spark uh, a lifelong passion uh, for science, for life sciences, for practical science. I know it did for me. Okay, um, so uh, hopefully uh, you found this interesting uh, and if you do want to know anything more about uh, A-level biology at Ashton Sixth, you can speak to your science teachers or you can email me. Okay, thank you very much.